tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, your host, and this is my channel all about crochet and knitting and a general yarny life. I am 28 and I live in the United Kingdom and I am aspiring to be a crochet designer and this channel is where I bring you all of my little updates um, showing you my projects and my stash and my stash enhancements and all of the patterns and designs I'm working on whether mine or um, an amazing pattern that's already out there. So today is just a little quick update um, I just need to say if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for popping by. Um, and if you are a um, brand new subscriber or brand new to the channel, please subscribe and thank you so much for joining us. I usually say hi, hello and welcome. So I feel like I should just put that in there. Um, today is just a little vlog. Um, got a sore throat guys and it's croaking you don't want to hear that for too long but i just want you to see what's going on in the world of hgdc so today is just an update on my granny square jumper Ta -ta -la -ta -ta. this is my granny square jumper oh i just love it so much so I started this jumper back in sort of May. Um, this is the first garment that I started to design for myself. Um, if you're a long term subscriber then you will know that I finished an oversized jumper pattern that I knitted and that was it. I was just, I was completely hooked. That's a really bad pun because I was knitting, I wasn't crocheting but I was hooked on making my own clothes from then on. Um, as a child, I did dabble with a sewing machine and things like that, but I've never crocheted a wearable garment other than like bed socks. Um, and once I'd done that giant, that jumper, that oversized jumper, I just knew that I wanted to make crochet something that I could wear. So with this design, um, it kind of popped in my head. I've got it in my journal. And I was writing down all the projects I wanted to work on and I just sketched out, here we go, can you see it, hmm. there we go, I sketched out a very very amateur design and I just put in there how I thought I would put it together. And what I've done is I've used the humble gra granny square. I adore the granny square. I just find them so therapeutic and I have made so, so many in my time as a crocheter. So I think that's about eight years now. I have bags, I'm just looking off camera because there is a huge bag of granny squares. Um, and I knew I really wanted to incorporate them. So I used these granny squares that are three rounds each. Come on lighting, stop fuzzing it out. They're three rounds each. I used a 3.5 mil hook on this um, jumper. I have got four by one, two, three, four, five, four by five for the granny squares. Um, it's actually longer than I, I intended, but I just felt like it needed to be quite substantial. It's a thick um, jumper. It's made out of double knit yarn. The squares are made out of scraps. Um, I have got so, so many of these. I just picked random ones. Um, and then I then crocheted around them with this color to join. This color is like, Oh, it's all wrapped around me. Podcasting fails. It's this amazing bright colour. I don't even know how to subs subscribe. I don't even know how to subscribe it. I don't even know how to describe this colour. But I just love it. It's a really vivid purple. A really vivid plum. I don't know. 
not plum, it's brighter than that. Give me some colour ideas. The um, ball band just says... The ball band just says violet. So it's a vivid violet. But I wouldn't have put that as violet. Um, and it's... <clears throat> excuse me. Good old fashioned DK. It's 100% acrylic. And it's just something I picked up. I'm sure the shop that I went to quite a while ago, it was something like 10 balls for £10 and I got five balls of it, so it was a fiver. So in effect, this jumper has cost me like £5 and, and a bit of stash diving. Um, so the panels, front and back, have got granny squares on them. It looks really nice. And then I've trebled... I've done join as you go, should I say, on the granny squares and join them together. And then for the sleeves, I have used double crochets. I did them flat. Uh, I would rework them in the round. Since doing the enamoured pattern, which is my granny square cardigan, I have learnt that the crochet sleeves in the round are so much better and you don't get this seam um, so it just looks more fluid and what I've done is I actually knitted all of the rib on this I knitted the rib because I wasn't keen on crochet rib but since then I did Artie's cardigan and I actually quite like crochet rib so again to rework this I would do crochet rib um, so that all the crochets out there can make the entire jumper but I have knit the rib, I used 4.5mm needles um, and it is nice and stretchy, it does give it a good fit and then the same for the cuffs, I have knit the rib and I like quite a deep rib, I either like my ribbing really small or really deep none of this, you know, none of this average, this is a good size rib make it big or make it little um, and then I, to carry on the design, I've put a few rows of granny stripe just there before I went into the doubles. Now, I started this in May and then in the UK in this year, 2018, we have had a mega heat wave and we were like reaching temperatures of 29 degrees, 30 degrees, which is just not normal for here. Normally a good summer is about 22 max. And we had this heat wave from pretty much June up until August. And it was too hot to sit with this on me. I think um, sort of mid-June, I was actually sat in the shade just with this on my lap trying to sew it all up. And it was too much. I couldn't do it. And so I had to put it to one side. Um, because even in the evenings, there was just no let up from that heat. We don't have air conditioning as standard in our houses here and it honestly it's just too much. So I put it to one side. Um but then when I got it out again a few weeks back, I think I was just when I went through all of my stash and I was rearranging my whips and working out what I wanted to work on, I pulled it back out and I tried it on. Almost lost my stitching then. And I just I absolutely love it. It fits really, really well. Um, so yesterday I sewed up the remaining sleeve on the side. Um, so it's all sewn up and the only thing left to do is the neck shaping. And I say only, like it's a small job. Um, I did start working on it. And I thought I'd got quite far and I had to rip a load back because it wasn't, it wasn't, rather than it decreasing, it was just sticking up in a weird kind of, I don't even know what shape, trapezium maybe, like, can I even make, whatever, it was sticking up weird, okay, and um, I ripped it back and I know what I want it to look like. But I feel a little bit hampered in that I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get there. But that's okay. Um, 
it's not helping that I've not been feeling well and my brain's really foggy and so I will like try it on, I'll look at it and be like, right, this is what I'm gonna do. And then I'll sit down and be like, what did I just decide? So even when I'm writing it down, I'm like, hmm. So for now, I'm gonna step away from it for a couple of weeks until the brain fog hopefully is cleared this is all gone and I feel more normal, I feel more myself. Um, and in the interim, I'm going to look at other crochet jumper designs just to see how they do their net shaping so that I can get some ideas because I haven't done, the only crochet jumper I've made is my Candyland crochet summer jumper by Two of Wands. And that was, they made the panels front and back in in um, one piece, starting from the bottom going up. So I'm half tempted to take this all apart again for like the fifth or sixth time and crochet the front panel like continue up from the front panel, do the next shape and then come down over the back. Maybe I wouldn't need to take it apart, I could just slip stitch into this <clears throat> to join it. So that's one option. But I just want to see what other patterns do and I've got a few books with crochet jumpers in. I just want to get some more ideas. So I'm not annoyed at myself at how long this is taking. I absolutely love this design. It's gonna be one of my favorite patterns without a doubt. I am loving the granny square. I love wearing granny squares. I love making granny squares. And I have realized that when it comes to sort of a traditional crochet, so traditional, um, you know, granny squares or any sort of retro, vintagey um, type, iconic look I really like to do them in bright colors so that you just like wow um really mixing the traditional with more modern and I'd quite like to do that as well with like a Aran jumper with cabling um I'd like to get one of my grandma's books with a really traditional Aran jumper and then just do it in some like hot pink or something like that mustard just bringing the old together with the new um, bring the old together and then my hands just wow. <laughs> excuse me oh dear so it is taking a little while to bring together I have still got the next shaping to work out and once I've worked that out I am really likely to make another one um, purely because I want to try doing crochet and ribbing and I want to do the sleeves in the round. Um, and what I've just said I want it in bright, it's because I've got this in such bright colour, I'm probably going to make the other one in a really neutral. So I'm going to do like the more earthy tones for the centre, for the scrap squares. Um, I'll just raid the squares I've got and make sure, like, break some of them down so all of the squares are really contrasting. So I'll break a load of them down so that I can use um, the neutral centres and other layers and put them together to make a more neutral square. So like, for example, this one's got a brown second round. I would take one that's got that more neutral outer round and then I'd find one with a neutral centre and then I'd put them together to make the squares that I want. And then I might put it together with like an oatmeal or like a sandy colour, just so that I've got um, two different looks because I'm going to have two of the same jumpers. So I've got a bright one and I've got a more pared down one. But generally I really like my granny squares to be as bright as possible, like enamoured. Um, and that has given me the idea of doing the brightly coloured Aran jumper. Um, and I'm just enjoying the journey of learning my own patterns and the best ways to do things. I know a lot of people are really, really waiting for this pattern and I will get it to you just as soon as I am done with it. And it's still got stitch markers at the moment for where my neck opening should be. But it isn't forgotten, it is much loved. I think I've used 
just under 300 grams to join this together because mm. I've got a full bowl left and I've got this um, which isn't bad going this is going to be the size small so I'll have to weigh how much all of my scrap squares are together but I can't imagine it's a lot and again you go stash diving or you could if you wanted to buy some double knit in specific colours I just really like how they're so random but it works they're really pulled together um, and as I said 3.5 mil hook because I wanted that really tight stitch um, to make it as warm as possible and it really is so warm and then um, yeah I think that's everything I wanted to tell you on it just that I just wanted to pop in to give you a little update on one of my designs I'm working on where I am with it um, the difficulties I'm running into not really difficulties it's just I'm learning a lot with this pattern so the sleeves in the round definitely a winner winner chicken dinner um, then the ribbing I'm gonna give the option to do knitting and crochet I think I like the knitted rib but there's nothing wrong with crochet rib and if you're only a crochet and you need to be able to finish your jumper um, but yeah I just I really really love it and as soon as I work out how to continue with the neck shaping I will the um, granny squares sit quite low down so they actually sit like here and maybe if I was to redo the pattern I'd have them sit more up here I don't know but what do you think this is my granny square jumper it doesn't have a name other than granny square jumper but I would like it to have one like enamored like inspirited um, so that's another thing to work on yeah I love it I love it love it love it and now I've shown you it it's going away for a little while um, whilst I ponder the best way to finish it off and then all the ends will need sewing in I haven't sewn them in because I'm not sure if I'm taking it apart again and that would just make it more difficult and then it kind of needs a nice project bag because it's living in my JD bag <laughs> and it's starting to it because it had been in there for a few months it's smelling a bit musty so the next yarn festival I go to more project bags are on the cards so that was just a really quick vlog just to show you where I am with that particular pattern um, I don't really include it as a whip in any of the my normal vlogs because it's not really seeing much work so all I'd be able to show you is I added a row and I frogged it but um, and just giving it a little bit of love I am really looking forward to seeing it finished so that is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any crochet patterns you think I should look at to help give me some inspiration for the, to finish the neck and the shaping, then um, link me up below and I will see you again soon. One more thing before I go is that there's a giveaway going on at the moment and it's gonna be announced in the third week of, the winners are gonna be announced in the third week of October. So you still got time to enter. When I went to Yarndale, you can see the vlog previously, I've linked somewhere. Um, I went to Yarndale the last week of September and I went and brought the goodies. I've got two giveaways on the, on the go. So, the giveaway for YouTube subscribers is these two skeins of loveliness. We've got this turquoise one by River Knits and we've got this hot fuchsia pink by Martin's Lab. That is blowing out a tree. And to go with it, I've got this stitch marker. Every time, it always wants to twist which is mermaid scales and that was custom made for one of my HGDC sock boxes so the Martin's Lab Mini I think he's a Polish dyer he's 
definitely European anyway. Um, it's Tough Sock Mini, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And it's 20 grams, which if you, oh, hiccup, sorry. If you count that in meters or yardage, 85 meters, 93 yards. Oh dear, we're just blowing everything out today. Well, anyway, we've got this amazing little giveaway for YouTube. That's to celebrate reaching 500 subscribers, although we are pretty much on 600 now. So this is just my appreciation and I just wanted to give something back to the tribe. You spend so much time here with me and all of your amazing comments. To enter this giveaway, you need to go to the vlog on Yarndale where I announced the giveaway and I am asking that you post a comment of some healing words or words of encouragement or an affirmation. So for example, you could say, um, I am resilient or you can put something like, um, keep going, you've got this, anything like that. And what I'm going to do with those words as well is they're going to go on my squares. She says, looking around for them. I have made a lot of these squares. They're called HGDC um, Patch of Happy. They're granny squares that I've attached to some yarn onto my business cards. Um, and these ones, example, for example, say, small steps every day with the hashtag and this one says take the first step and um, whatever comments you put I want to be able to put onto the back of some of these to spread around so that not only am I absorbing lots of healing and lots of I need lots of healing because my health is a little bit yeah and um, not only will I be able to absorb that that wherever these are dropped off they will be able to absorb them as well so in order to get yourself some of these goodies, this lot of goodies here, and to spread even more encouragement, go back to the post about Yarndale and the giveaways. It's called um, Finishing Finale and a Giveaway. And I'll link it and hopefully it's popped up. Comment on there, make sure you're subscribed and I'll be picking a winner. Um, so yeah. Then there's one more giveaway. Oh yeah, there's more. I have a Patreon account, and Patreon is a platform where um, creatives can receive su support from um, their tribe, such as you lot. And, sorry, my head's just gone all foggy, and you can probably hear it in my voice. Wonderful. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, so there's two, I've got two giveaways running. So the second one is for Patreons. Patreon is a platform where creatives can receive support. So HGDC can receive support from the tribe. Um, the sign up cost is minimum one dollar and the maximum is three dollars so i get about two pound fifty from that and that money then feeds into the channel and that means that i can get more fancy equipment like lighting i can um i can do more giveaways and i can take you more places see more things try more yarn um also on there I do quite a lot of sneak peek posts, so I will post um, ahead of time of what YouTube receives. So, for example, when I received yarn from R Rico Yarn, Rito Yarn, thank you, Rito, I um, posted ahead of time on Patreon that I had this bag of yarn to open so if you sign up to patreon you will be in the know and you'll be up to date with me and what's going on i also post um just sort of little snippets of like my inspiration things that i'm really drawing motivation from um and then behind the scenes in terms of 
designing garments, where I am with projects. Um, there's a new thing where I've started posting every Sunday, like motivation, it's called Monday Motivation. And it's just some affirmations to repeat to yourself whilst you um, do a little bit of meditative crochet or knitting. So yeah, there's loads of good stuff on there and it's really building as a platform and there's more and more of us on there, which is great. Um, there's also a place where you can post stuff that you're working on and shout outs that you want to hear. Um, it's also a great place for you to request videos from me. I've got a couple of those and they are in the works. And also, because I'm putting patterns out soon, I will be posting um, discount codes for my Patreons. So if you are signed up as a $3 Patreon, you will then get a discount code so that you receive X amount of money off against my pattern. At least the $3 plus more that you've already put in so that it works out well for you. Um, and same if you're a $1 sign up, you will get a discount code to get you $1 plus more off the pattern. And that's just because I want to make it fair. I want I want to like just show you how appreciative I am that you've signed up to provide that monthly stability for HDDC because with that money I can then go to festivals like Yarndale and I can pick up um, more giveaway prizes. There will be more giveaways coming for Patreon when it hits milestone patrons. I think I'm going to do one when it hits 50 um, and we'll see how we go from there. And then also obviously there will be more for YouTube possibly when I reach a thousand. But we'll see. It depends on what else is going on on the channel. So let me show you the Patreon giveaway whilst I just ramble. If you're a Patreon existing or about to sign up, you will get, and I bought this. Oh, I love this prize. And if I had more money, I'd have bought me one as well. But i got to make sure you guys are taken care of. So I've got this crocheter project bag it's black all black everything the way to my heart with gold foil which says crocheter on it and that's by stitcher tees um this is by vicky brown and her sister they've got loads and loads of goodies and then i whilst i was hitting up her stall i got a mini as well this mini is 20 grams of sock four ply it's 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon and tw and it weighs 20 grams which is 85 meters and it's in their hot pink colorway. It's got bright hot pinks, uh, bright splashes of hot pink and then the paler pink there which has come up quite light. Um, I decided to go all pink because my Yarndale band was pink and if you watch this you know I've got a little bit of a soft spot for pink. So that's the Patreon giveaway. I love this bag. Whoever gets this, oh, I can't wait to see your project in here and what you make with this. It can go towards socks, it can go towards a blanket, a shawl, whatever you've got in mind. I can't wait to see. So to sign up, um, to enter rather, or sign up to this giveaway for Patreon, you need to sign up to Patreon and there's a post on there all about the giveaway and again on there you just need to comment some healing or some encouraging words i appreciate if you've already signed up for youtube then you've got to come up with two entries but i'm sure you've all got plenty of good stuff out there just some positive words anything healing anything of encouragement um you know even if you have to google it for some inspiration so the winners will be announced on the third week of October. I think it's like the 23rd-ish. Can't check because I'm recording on my phone. But it's the third week of October. I might have put it on the screen for you. This is the Patreon giveaway. And this is the YouTube giveaway. So make sure you enter to win. And I can't wait to draw the winners. Okay, thank you. Happy making.